Hi, this is Linda and Aaron with Traveling Flamingo. Welcome back to our cruising friends and to anyone new to our channel. It's great to have you with us here today as we are on one of Princess Cruise's newest ships, the Enchanted Princess. These new cruise ships are massive and it can be overwhelming with everything to see and do. We're going to take you on a walkthrough of the entire Enchanted Princess so you can see what areas there are and restaurants on board so you don't miss out on anything you really want to try. All that and more coming right up. Before we get into our tour, we wanted to give you a little background information about the ship. The Enchanted Princess was built in 2020 and had a refurbishment in April of 2023. It's one of Princess Cruises' largest ships at 145,281 gross tons. This is the fifth Royal class ship to set sail. It shares a lot of the same features with its sister ships, the Royal Princess, Regal Princess, Majestic Princess, Sky Princess, and the Discovery Princess. There are a variety of activities and spaces to explore both inside and outside on this ship that can accommodate 3,660 passengers and over 1,300 crew. Some of the main areas that you'll definitely want to check out are the Piazza, the three swimming pools, and the Glass Bottom Seawalk. So let's get into the tour of the Enchanted Princess. For a ship tour, we're going to start at the top and work our way down to the bottom deck. On each deck, we're going to start at the front of the ship and work our way back. At the very top deck, Vista Deck 19, you'll find the Greens Mini Golf. It's a fun place to challenge a friend to a putting competition or enjoy some views while sailing. As we move down to the Sky Deck or Deck 18, there is a bit more to explore. There is the front section you can access through the front elevators, which has the Sanctuary, which is an adult-only area that does have an additional charge to enter. There are luxury lounge chairs, hot tubs, and great views. As you move back, you come to the top deck of the Retreat, which is the adult-only area. This deck has two jacuzzis and some comfortable loungers. This area does not cost extra money to use. As you move to the back section of this deck, you have the jogging track, which is nice that it's not around the pool deck. If you want to get some extra movement in on your trip, seven laps equals one mile. There was one time I was running on a ship and because we were sailing, when my watch was tracking the distance, it was my fastest 5K ever I've run. So thank you to the cruising speed. Here you'll also find the sports court, which has a full-size basketball court and is used for volleyball, tennis, basketball, soccer, and more. Often there are fun challenges and games run on the sports court. Before we continue, I just want to pop in here and thank everybody for taking the time to watch our video and support our channel and let you know we've got tons of videos about cruise ships, ports, and dining reviews. So when this video is done, feel free to check out our channel. It means a lot to us. Thank you. So let's continue moving down to the Sun Deck 17. At the front of the ship is a variety of staterooms and in between is the main level of the retreat pool. Again, this is the adult only area and it does not cost extra. There's loungers, a bar, as well as stairs up to the second level of the retreat where the jacuzzis are. As you continue, you come to the massive sun deck, which has four jacuzzis and tons of loungers for relaxing in the sun. But don't forget your sunscreen and make sure you reapply. On our first cruise, we were so excited. We put on our sunscreen, jumped in the pool, and then went and relaxed on the loungers and we all burnt. So now I make sure to reapply my sunscreen or wear a rash guard. After the sun deck, as you come to the aft, on one side is the fitness center. It's really nice with lots of cardio machines and weights. I also like that there are windows and it's not just in the basement. On the other side of the ship is the teen and youth areas. These are great to check out on the first day of your cruise to see what activities are being offered and for the kids to choose which ones they want to participate in. There are a variety of video games, scavenger hunts, theme parties, crafts, and more. I love the theming and they look like so much fun. Our friend who we've traveled with with kids said they loved the program and met some great friends they still connect with today. At the very back of the ship is the wake view. You're right over the wake view pool. There are some loungers as well as tables and chairs and this is one of the smoking areas on board. And that's it for deck 17. Now on to deck 16 or the Lido deck, which is a very busy deck you might find yourself spending a lot of time at. The front of the ship are staterooms. As you pass the elevators, you come out to the sky pool deck. Here you can find some great poolside snacks at the Salty Dog Cafe. They make some great burgers, chicken strips, and more. Even on a day it was really too cold to swim, we decided to come up here to enjoy a lunch. If you're not feeling like barbecue, there's also Alfredo's Slice which serves up some fresh made pizza. 
Both of these spots are included in your cruise fare, so enjoy as much as you want. The Sky Pool has two pools and multiple hot tubs to enjoy. There are a lot of loungers to relax and enjoy the views or movies under the stars. This area is just gorgeous and they'll be using this for the deck parties and other events. There's no shortage of places to get a drink when at the pool. At one end is the mix and at the other end there's a larger bar, the Sea View Bar. If you're still hungry after enjoying the pizza or looking for some dessert, you can stop off into Swirls for all the ice cream you can enjoy. The last major area on this deck is the World Fresh Marketplace. This is the complimentary buffet on board that's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There are a variety of different themed food stations to enjoy, as well as a delicious pastry shop in the middle. I love the floor to ceiling windows so you can still enjoy the views while having lunch. There is an indoor and outdoor seating area. We love outdoor seating, especially when sailing in the winter, because we like to get all the sun and fresh air that we can before returning to the snow. Right at the aft of the Enchanted Princess on deck 16, where the marketplace outdoor seating is, is where the Wakeview Bar is and the Wakeview Pool. This is a great pool for views while sailing, as you're right at the back of the ship. There are not as many lounges here, but it's a super relaxing pool. On deck 15, the marina, it is all staterooms and a laundromat. This is a self-serve laundromat if you want to do some laundry on your trip. It's nice if you have a little bit of extra vacation before or after that you're able to wash your clothes. You'll find a laundromat on all the stateroom floors. Now on deck 14 Riviera, you'll find staterooms except in the middle there's also the wedding chapel and concierge lounge. On the Enchanted Princess, decks 12 to 8 are all staterooms with their own laundry. So let's get back to the action on deck 7. This is the promenade deck. At the bow of the ship is where you'll find the entrance to the Princess Theatre. This is the main stage where you can enjoy Princess Cruises Broadway style productions that they're known for. You can also check out a variety of musicians, comedians, and enrichment programs. You can find all the times in the Princess app. As you continue back past the elevators, you come to the shop zone Princess where you can do some duty free shopping. This is also where you can get your Princess branded merchandise. We like getting a mug or a Christmas tree ornament to remember our trip. Next, we come to the top deck of the three level piazza. This is a beautiful area where you can enjoy some dining, drinks, live music, and entertainment. This is definitely the main hangout place in the evening. Bellini's Bar is where you can get all your beverages while you're enjoying the music. On one side is Alfredo's Pizzeria. This is included in your cruise fare and serves up some amazing pizza, antipasti, and salads. This was definitely Aaron's favorite pizza on board, and we, don't, we did get in here twice, but I'm sure he would have wanted to go a third time. On the other side is where we see some changes since the April 2023 refurbishment. Before it was Bistro Sur La Mure, which is no longer available, and now you'll find Sabatini's Trattoria, which is a specialty restaurant that will cost you extra and offers a three-course Italian meal. You'll get to choose from some delicious Italian dishes and homemade pasta. As we continue back, we come to the Princess Live and Princess Live Cafe. During the day, this is a great option to get a drink and enjoy a calm atmosphere. In the Princess Live Lounge, they'll have musical performances and games. We participated in the Majority Rules game and it was hilarious and tons of fun. Shout out to Princess Cruises Entertainment staff who offered a bunch of fun games and activities to participate in. You guys are amazing. Just past Princess Live is the Crown Grill and the Crown Grill Bar. This is a steakhouse on board and is a specialty restaurant. This is a very popular restaurant, so we recommend booking ahead of time to ensure you get the date and time you prefer. In the bar, they have live music and some comfortable seating. Anyone can come and enjoy a drink at the bar. At the back of the Enchanted Princess on Deck 7 is the Vista Lounge. This is another lounge with a dance floor, bar, and stage. Here you can come to play bingo, watch live performances, or join a dance party. We watched the Love and Marriage game here and it was so much fun in the intimate atmosphere. So let's move down to Deck 6, Fiesta, which has lots to check out. Starting at the bow is the lower level of the Princess Theatre and there is an entrance on this deck. If you want to sit closer to the front, that would be the deck to enter on. As you leave the theatre, you come to Churchill's Cigar Lounge. This is a small cigar lounge and is one of the smoking areas on board. Next you have the Princess Casino, which is 21 plus and has a variety of slot machines and tables. There is a full service bar in the casino and it is a smoking area. Because I'm very sensitive to smoke, we often walk through Take 5 when we were going from the front to the back. Take 5 is the new jazz themed lounge on board Princess Cruises. 
There's comfortable seats, windows, a bar, and an area for bands or performers. They will also use this room to run fun activities. We participated in carpet bowling and we had never done it before. Erin is surprisingly good at it. This is also a nice quiet place to relax during the day. As you pass through Take 5, you come to the second level of the piazza. Here you'll find Ocean Terrace Sushi, which serves up some delicious food with views of the performers below. There's Crooner's Bar, which is an old school vibe with dark reds and a bar theming. This is another great place to relax and enjoy some live music. You also have some more shops, the photo and video gallery, and the fine arts gallery. If you are looking to get any of your photos that were taken on board, or if you're in need of some photography equipment, you can find that at the photo gallery. If you like to take advantage of the future cruise sailing offers, then you'll wanna head to the future cruise center. Sometimes they have some really good deals. As you leave the piazza, you come to the Capri dining room. There are three main dining rooms on board, all offer the same dinner menu. These are included in your cruise fare. There's usually one open for breakfast if you prefer table service, so check out the Princess app for which dining room and the times. At the very aft is the Amalfi dining room. This one is only accessible by the aft elevators. There's an area in the middle set up for the chef's table, Lumiere. We really wanted to try this, but when we booked, it was already sold out. We found the food in the main dining rooms to be very nice and offered a good variety. The service was also great. We often had a bit of a wait to get in, but once we were seated, the meal moved along at a good pace. So let's head down to deck five or the Plaza of the Enchanted Princess. This is another very busy deck. At the bow of the ship, you'll find the Lotus Spa. Here you can book massages and other treatments to enhance your relaxation of your trip. These are an additional cost. If you didn't get a chance to get your hair done before sailing, there's also a full salon and barber on board. On the first day, there are often deals, so we recommend heading down if you want to book something on your trip. Here you can also find the Enclave, which is the thermal suite, with a steam room, sensory showers, hydrotherapy pool, and heated loungers. It is a really nice space, but I do prefer it when there are windows in the thermal spa and it's not on the interior of the ship. As you head out of the thermal spa, you come to guest service area and the shore excursion desk. One thing I really liked about the Princess app is that you could message guest services instead of waiting in line. So if you have a question but there's a big line, try using the app. Across from guest services is another area we've seen the change since the refurbishment and this is where Sabatini's had been located, but now you can find the new Catch by Ruby. This is an additional charge restaurant we like the intimate layout and if you're a fan of seafood then this will be the specialty restaurant you'll want to try. Now we come to the bottom level of the piazza. This is definitely a gorgeous area with the panoramic lifts and decorative stairs. There will be different live performers here and activities during the day. Erin and I did a minute to win it game and we actually tied for first place. Not that we're competitive or anything. The International Cafe is a great spot to grab some food. In the morning, they have donuts and other breakfast items. It then switches over to lunch and dinner later on. We often grabbed food from here and then sat in one of the pubs. The drinks that they have are not included, but you can use your drink package here. Next to the International Cafe is Good Spirits. Here they take you on a journey around the world telling stories with their spirits. It's a great comfortable place to relax with the nice large windows. Anyone can come and sit in the bar or any bar and don't feel the need to order a drink. On the other side of the piazza is O'Malley's Irish Pub. This had been the Salty Dog Gastro Pug. There are tons of pub classics like Scotch Eggs, Pan Fried Guinness Chicken, and Irish Beers. This is an additional cost. Next is the Gelateria, which is an ice cream bar with some delicious treats. This is an additional cost. Celebrations is a little shop that has some extra treats if you're looking for some goodies to enjoy. At the bow of the ship is the last main dining room, Santorini. If you've made reservations or been assigned a dining room with set dining times, double check which one it is before you head over there for your meal. Now down to the last deck passengers have access to on the Enchanted Princess, Deck 4 Gala. If you have a medical emergency on board or need medical attention, this is where you can find the medical center. If you do need to see a doctor, it's like going to a private doctor so you will be charged is recommended to buy cruise health insurance to cover these charges or check your travel insurance. This is also the deck that tender embarkation happens. We were able to do this a couple times on our cruise. It does take a long time to get everybody on and off the tender, but it's a fun experience. 
So overall, this is a great ship for adults and families who are looking for a cruise vacation on an elegant modern cruise ship. If you're interested in more thrilling attractions like water slides, roller coasters, and rock climbing walls, other cruise lines will provide those experiences. It's a gorgeous ship and they definitely paid attention to the detail. We loved finding all the little quiet areas to relax during the day and in the evening. The entertainment on board was terrific and the staff really took the time to make our trip special. What do you think of the Enchanted Princess? Do you like the changes they made in April with the refurbishment? Do you have a favorite area to hang out? Let us know in the comments below. We love hearing your ideas and experiences. Thank you so much for your support. We love making travel content and to tips to help you plan your fabulous vacation. If you want some more of our content, we have another channel, Flamingos in Wonderland, where we talk about all things theme parks and Disney. Thank you again for your support. Remember, memories are forever, so make them fabulous. Thanks again for watching and happy travels.